All right. Hello, Clarissa. Hello, Manuel. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks. We're demoing here um, our Cisco IR1100 with secure equipment access. Oh, great. Well, that's true. And it's, it's amazing because it, it enables to provide access to remote assets. Think about a PLC or a Windows computer to a site where typically remote access is very difficult to get. I'm thinking um, behind a cellular gateway, behind NAT, behind firewalls. So if you have a, such a computer, for example, and you want to provide access to an external partner or an external party, and you want to provide access to this computer, how would you typically do currently? Maybe with VPN, but it honestly might be pretty complicated. Because of the firewall, because of the rules? Yeah, everything. That's true. And then with VPN, the other problem is, if you connect with a VPN, you give access to everything. So the remote user get access to your entire network, but maybe you just want to give it access to one single thing. Okay. To illustrate that, we have here a Raspberry Pi, which can act as a remote computer. And say, Clarissa, that I want to give you access to just the web interface of that Raspberry Pi. How would I do that? Uh, by using Secure Access and IoT Ops dashboard, I will add this IR1100 to the SCA service just by simply um, clicking here on Add a Network Device. You add the gateway, and automatically it will install an IOX agent, which is called the SCA agent. And the role of that agent is to proxy the connections from the cloud to this gateway and to the, the end user, to the end device, in this case, the Raspberry Pi. Is this something that you need networking experience for? If I'm an OT, not really. it seems a little complicated, or is it really just easy? It's just easy, just add the gateway. What I'm explaining is what's happening in the back end, but all you have to do really is to click add the gateway, and it will automatically be done. Then the next step is to add the client. Okay. All you need to know is the IP address of this client. In this case, it's a Raspberry Pi, we have the IP address and I can add a number of access methods. So an access method is how am I going to access that device? In this case, I can have SSH, HTTP, but it could be VNC, RDP, Telnet, any of those access methods are valid. But you, Clarissa, I want you to be able to use just HTTP. Okay. So I created two access methods and to do that, in the access management, I will create a group, call it, call it Clarissa Raspberry Pi, in this group, I will add you as a user and the Raspberry Pi HTTP access method. You will get an email to create a password, and then you can log in into IoT OD. And what if I want multiple people, like my colleague, to be able to access it as well? Can Good you have question. multiple users? In the group, you can add as many groups as you want, and in each group, as many users or access methods. And you can reorganize them as you want, like provide access to all of the SSH equipment in a specific location, or everything in a specific location, and you can really mix and match users and access methods. Oh, perfect. And as a user, Clarissa, after you created your password and you log on, log on into IoT OD, the only thing you will see is this access here to the Raspberry Pi, Cisco Live. Click on that, and it opens up the web UI. So this web interface actually runs on the Raspberry Pi, but it's proxied through IoT OD using the SCA agent. For example, I'm going to enter a command. In this case, I will type your name. As soon as you can see, as soon as I press enter, your name shows up on the Raspberry Pi. Wow. Another way to say that is from anywhere in the world, you are able to use and control that display, be it at your home, be it on your mobile phone, or you are in a vacation, fancy vacation in Australia. From anywhere, you can control the device and provide access. Something also very important is that there is no direct IP connectivity between the remote access computer and, um, and the device. So even if you have a virus, which can happen, particularly for the moment where it's pretty Especially risky. in critical infrastructure. That's in critical infrastructure, that's huge. even worse. You, you, come, because there is no IP communication in between the two, the virus will never be able to make it to the end device. So there's a complete isolation. I can also show you, for example, um, how to access a Windows computer in our office in San Jose, California. I simply click on this RDP link. It opens up the Windows session. And what is amazing is I didn't have to enter a password. Wow. 
So I can give you access to a Windows computer and you don't know the password of that Windows computer. So you cannot change it or do any harm in that computer or ask for admin privilege and things like that. Yeah. And again, good protection. Even if you have a virus, there is no communication whatsoever between your computer and the Windows machine. Does that sound easy? It does. So I'm seeing in this demo Windows computer and a Raspberry Pi. What other use cases can this be used for? It could be a programmable logic controller. It could be a wind another Windows machine like this one. It could be you use that Windows machine to access another machine, what we call a jump host. Um, it can be um, the router itself, which is a very good use case. Sometimes customers want to get console access of that equipment or any equipment behind the router and at the switch, for example. Um, it could be um, using Telnet. We have done for one of our customers an interactive menu. So you use Telnet, you connect on the gateway, and you have an interactive menu where you can enable or disable serial ports, for example. Wow. And you don't have to log onto the router, you don't have to know the password, you don't have to know the iOS command. You just use SCA, logs you to the router, enable, disable serial port. Anyone can do this. So we really can make the experience a lot more simple by using secure equipment access. That's amazing. Well, thank you, Clarissa. Thank I hope you, that was Emmanuel. useful.